Hey, y'all. I'm Amy Morgan. I'm the marketing coordinator for Pediatric Dental Associates and Orthodontics. And in today's PDAO Team Talk, we have a very special guest, our very own orthodontist from our Fayetteville location, and actually a partner owner, Dr. Jason Landers. So go ahead and say hello. Hello, everyone. How are you guys doing today? All right. So Dr. Jason is um, joining us today. We're going to learn a little bit about him and his family and some hobbies and some other fun subjects like that. And then we're going to get into the fun side of orthodontics. Woo. For sure. Um, so first off, let's just get to it. Like, tell us a little bit about your family and about all your how much you love Northwest Arkansas, because we know you do. Oh, I love everything about Northwest Arkansas, for sure. Uh, my family and I, we moved here in 2004, um, moved to Fayetteville. Um, my wife and I have been married for over 22 years now. Um, we have two kids. <clears throat> my son Davidson is a senior at FHS and my daughter is a 10th grader at FHS. So, uh, we spend most of our time with activities that involve the kids. Um, most, uh, so if it's, uh, tennis matches or activities on the weekend, it's usually involving what their activities are. So, um, things that I enjoy, um, I enjoy anything outdoors, really. Um, uh, that's one of the main reasons I moved back to Northwest Arkansas. I grew up in South Arkansas, and it's hot, and there's a lot of mosquitoes down there. And so that's one of the reasons why we migrated north to Fayetteville and settled our family down here. And it couldn't have made a better choice as a location. So, uh, But as far as my activities, I enjoy running, uh, trail running, um, uh, backpacking, camping, um, the fly fishing, and just any opportunity that I can get, enjoy the beauty of Northwest Arkansas and the beautiful trails that we have here and spend time with my family. That's typically how I, if I'm not working on teeth, that's what I'm doing. I love it. I love yeah. it. So one thing that we, I did not prepare you for, but I want you to go into a little bit is sure. you did something amazing this last year. Oh, I don't know some, how amazing it, it was. I mean, I'm not saying it was an amazing experience, but I did. Yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your, your run or your hike or whatever was happening at the Grand Canyon. Well, I've got a group of friends that I started running with uh, right around COVID time, I would think. I mean, going through COVID, that was tough for everybody. Um, and so one of my things that I kind of strive to do is to become better at something after COVID rather than just sitting around being depressed and concerned about what was going on outside of my house. So I uh, started running. Uh, I got a group of guys that I uh, run with three, four times a week. And we got this crazy idea about a year, year and a half ago that we decided we wanted to challenge ourselves and run the Grand Canyon. And so Grand Canyon, I've been there before. Uh, I'd hiked down a little bit of the Grand Canyon. Uh, if you haven't been there, I would highly recommend it. It's a beautiful place. Um, just in awe with how small you feel when you're at the Grand Canyon. Uh, but we just set our our sights on doing what they call rim to rim to rim run, which is from the south rim of the Grand Canyon over to the north rim of the Grand Canyon and then back to the south rim. And we would like to have done that all in one day was our goal. And so this April, um, we flew out to Phoenix, drove up to the Grand Canyon, um, started our trek at 3 a.m. Uh, and because we wanted to kind of beat the crowds, um, we knew that there was going to be a lot of snow and ice on the south and the north rim. So we wanted to uh, make sure we allotted plenty of time to complete the adventure and start at 3 a.m. And with just running vests, water bottles, and a lot of burritos that I had pre-made and wrapped in foil. Um, that was kind of our fuel for the day. And uh, and we ran from 3 a.m. down to the floor of the Grand Canyon, across to the other side, up to the north side, and back again. And it was totaled about 47 miles, and we finished at 8 o'clock in the evening. So it was a long adventure. Uh, something I would definitely do again. And I wouldn't recommend maybe the 47 mile trek for everyone, but there's shorter versions that you can do. Um, but I just, I like to challenge myself to do difficult things because life's short. So 
Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that's amazing. And um, we do have a fun video on our social media of um, kind of <clears> that you actually provided all the footage for. I was very proud. I was well, like, hey. I've got to give gotta my daughter. Sure. Uh, yeah. She is the uh, uh, Instagram queen in our house. So she can like put those things together a lot easier than I can. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Good job, Lily. <clears throat> we appreciate that. We really do. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, just that just I think I, one reason I wanted to hit on that is that speaks to especially for us as your staff at PDA and O is that like when you have a goal or you're challenging us, you're going to keep us on board for that. And you're going to make sure that we're following through and that we're, you know, continuing to go along with our mission and all those kinds of things. So I really wanted to highlight that story because this is the um, Dr. Jason that we all truly like believe in and <laughs> When you're doing those things in your personal life, it really does show up for us as staff as well. So cool. it's very cool. Um, so now we're going to, you've got, talked about your family, you've talked about some of your kind of your hobbies. We've highlighted that. Um, let's talk a little bit about how and kind of why you became an orthodontist. Kind of what was your journey there? I know there's some optometrist stories in here, you know, yeah. through your family, but. Well, I grew up in a family, no dentist. I mean, um, but I had. Uh, my uncle, my grandfather, they were both eye surgeons or eye doctors. And so I was around medicine and taking care of people um, from an early age. And so going through school, anytime you had like a presentation at school, I was always the one that brought the the models of the eye and showed what was the inside of the eye looked like. And because my grandfather would help me out with that. And um, so from an early age, I it was ingrained to have a passion to care for others. Um, And so from that, going through high school, college, um, trying to define my path and how that would work out in my own life, um, I worked for many different uh, physicians, um, got experience in medicine and also in dentistry and in other fields and just felt like Dentistry and orthodontics in particular was probably the best path for me. Um, It's provided me the capability to work out my passion of taking care of people's smiles and taking care of people, but allows me also the capability to have balance with my family life as well, which I think is just as important. And so that was kind of what got me interested in dentistry and orthodontics for sure. For sure. Yeah. So then you're in dental school and your roommate was who? Well, I lived with Dr. Well, I didn't actually live with Dr. Will. Whenever I got into dental school, I knew Dr. Will from college and I reached out to him to see if he wanted a room together. Well, he already had an apartment. And so we ended up just living in the same apartment complex. So we rode to school together each and every day uh, to save money on gas. And Will always had the best playlist uh, going to school, for sure. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I frequently send the video of I Don't Want to Be a Player No More yeah, to that's, you, too, that's, when that's I hear Will's it. Because that was the jam, apparently. It really so was. I love that story about you guys. Yeah. And I think, you know, that that has also led to, you know, y'all being great partners, great owners. Sure. Dr. Will's one of our partner owners as well. Um, great guy. And just I feel like that was a natural fit whenever you came to work for us. Oh, so yeah, really no super excited about that. So you um, worked as an orthodontist in Northwest Arkansas for a few years before joining PDA and O. Yeah. You joined PDA and O in 2009 yes. part-time, did a lot of traveling mm-hmm. um, to work at different locations before we came on full-time. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, 2010, here you are like working as an orthodontist full-time for PDA and O mm-hmm. and it has just exploded. Yeah. That's it's the only good. word I have to say. It's, it's been, been very, very good. We've yes. been very blessed, yes. for sure. Um, you know, and then talk a little bit about that experience of um, just just being an orthodontist, working with our staff, just kind of your role at PDA and O, um, just kind of, you know, the highlights of that and kind of just. Yeah. Well, I think having conversations with Will and Jerry and Courtney and Tanya from early on, um, we always felt like there was a need to have collaborative care for the kids of Northwest Arkansas, collaborative dental dental care. And PDA was doing a fantastic job of um, providing those needs for dental services in Northwest Arkansas. I mean, better than, um, I mean, just a fantastic job. And so what 
other ways can we benefit the community and benefit the kids in Northwest Arkansas than by maybe uh, bringing orthodontics into the practice and having um, just a wider range of care for those patients? Because uh, pediatric dentists typically see patients at age one or two, and orthodontists don't typically see patients till seven, eight, or nine. And so, uh, but there's a lot of things that you can catch early and maybe prevent bigger issues as the child gets older into adolescence. And um, it's just uh, getting like-minded people together with the main focus of the optimal care for the patients uh, was what really intrigued me about the opportunity. And I think really works, uh, really works well and it benefits our practice, but also benefits um, the community as well. It does for sure. Yeah. I know, Families who are patients of ours in both lo in both um, departments, as they say, um, like really, really love the being able to come in, get their cleaning done, then go see the orthodontist, get those two appointments knocked out in one day. Mm -hmm. If there's any concerns that you're seeing them more often, um, if they're in orthodontics, so if there's any concerns that are coming up in between those six month checks, you're able to just say like, hey, guys, we really need to get you back over the other side. Let's have this x-ray done or whatever. We think maybe something's forming there. Um, and I think having being able to kind of um, catch that head on is something that's really important. And I think it ends in a much healthier result for the child, yeah. especially at the end of orthodontics. Orthodontics mm -hmm. can be kind of hard on um, kiddos, especially with the brushing and the flossing huh. and all the things that happen. It's and, so hard. Yeah. So. And so the more eyes that you have looking at it, the the better end result, in our opinion. That's what, what we've kind of based our business model. Oh, yeah. For sure. For on. sure. So. For sure. And I, you know, I just, I have been a part of it from the very beginning and mm -hmm. just watching it grow. And we joke all the time that we sit in this little office to the side on broken chairs and all kinds of different things. Mm -hmm. And we just, we, we've built this from 2009 to now. And, um, it's just been a very huge, um, part of my life, um, watching it grow. So, um, been very happy to have you as a partner, huh. owner, and my boss. Well, likewise. Uh, yeah. 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 We couldn't have done it without you. So. Been a good time. Yeah. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> and then just a little bit about, so you went to the U of A for yes. your um, undergrad. Mm -hmm. You went to dentist, dental school at- University U of Tennessee. And then you went to ortho school at- University of Oklahoma. Yes. In Oklahoma City. Yeah, yes. At the and, Science Center. Um, yes. So I love the um, picture that you have on your desk of all the three. You have a picture of Fayetteville. You have a picture of Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. And then you have a picture of, unfortunately, where yeah. the um, the monument or the, yeah, the yeah. Oklahoma City bombing. So you were you there in school when that happened? No, 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 no. I was in college when that occurred. But um, we lived in Oklahoma City very close to where the bombing site was. Right. And so uh, when we get up and run in the morning yeah. or something we typically run by there. It's just, it's, um, if you haven't had an opportunity to go see that museum, oh, I would highly recommend it's it. It's amazing. It is uh, quite a memorial to those people. It is. They've done yeah. a really, really, really good job of yeah. that. And like, I'm getting chills just thinking about it. I've been there. It's yeah. amazing. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. So now we're going to get to like the, what I would like to call the nitty gritty of this situation, okay. which is, um, so orthodontics is a fascinating world. Sure. Um, there are lots of things that happen inside of orthodontics. There's lots of collaboration, like we've already talked about. Mm -hmm. You're collaborating with not only their dentists, but oral surgeons, periodontists, like all kinds of people in the dental field, mm -hmm. um, in the oral health field. Um, but what are some things that um, have really like stood out to you as with your patients? Like what are, are there any like stories you want to share? I know we have something sitting on the table here that we want to talk mm -hmm. about. Um, but like, as far as like, what is your favorite part of being an orthodontist? And then we can segue into this. Well, I think the reason why I decided to study orthodontics is because I wanted to make a positive impact in kids' lives. And that is, I mean, we create smiles each and every day. And by creating smiles and moving teeth and correcting bites and creating healthier smile, uh, uh, functioning bites for kids, in turn, that can build confidence in someone and change their personality, possibly for the better, um, giving them that confidence. And so just setting up kids for success and 
giving them confidence in that sm their smile because the first thing that you see when you go to a job interview or the first time you when you meet your future wife or I mean a lot of times your smile on your teeth is what you notice and so orthodontics gave me that capability but also in orthodontics I had the capability of really getting to know patients because I see them every eight weeks um, in dentistry you may see them every six months and so <clears throat> in orthodontics I know I know how the football teams are playing. I know who made the dance team. I know how uh, the volleyball team's doing and what's going on at uh, dance competitions, which allows me to be a kid or kind of act like a kid or be know the T, from my, as my kids would say. Uh, and that's a lot of fun for me. So, and <clears throat> so that's reason why I explored orthodontics as the profession that fit my personality and, and where I felt like I could make the biggest impact. Um, one particular story that um, I'll share is there was a patient of mine that had just finished braces um, probably six months prior. She was a goalie for the FHS uh, soccer team. And so she was at a tournament in Little Rock, I think, and had an injury where <clears throat> she lost her front two teeth, sat very sadly. And so we quickly got her back into the office, worked collaborative care with um, Dr. Pierce Osborne and the Northwest Arkansas Perio team to um, get her back on track to get the implants done, bone graft implants, things that we need to restore her smile. And... She, years later, after <clears throat> we um, fixed everything, she came by to visit uh, when she was trying to decide what field she wanted to go into. And when she left, she left me a note <clears throat> or wrote me a note saying how that experience she had influenced her to go into medicine herself. So it's really yeah, pretty sweet. I think that's awesome. And yeah. we have posted um, a letter previously. We will um, pop it up here. Um, we'll get our video director to do that for us. Um, but it was very special. And I remember you sending me the text saying, you know, like, this is everything. This is exactly why I do what I do. And, you know, so I felt it was very important to highlight that here. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, just touch base real quickly. Like just one thing I think that a lot of our just our audience in general, whether there are patients or not, um, maybe just touch on, you know, what do you want them to know about orthodontics? Like, what do you want the, the public to know when you're talking about orthodontics? Um, what is like two or three things that you would definitely want to make sure that every person who's considering it or thinking about it or whatever that you would want them to know? Orthodontics, I mean, it can be perceived as something that is going to be difficult or very expensive or um, not very aesthetic or, um, and it, a lot of patients have questions or concerns about what orthodontics looks like. And with technology and with time and with research, orthodontics has changed. And so, um, yes, orthodontics is an investment in your, your smile or your child's smile, but we are at our office, we work out flexible financial options and try to make it to where it's affordable and um, uh, something that is not scary for the patient or the parent. And we have the capability of having clear brackets or Invisalign or uh, more aesthetic uh, materials that we use or tools that we use to move the teeth. And so, um, so if you have a concern, I mean, the American Association of Orthodontics recommends seeing children at age seven. But that doesn't mean that if you your child is five or six, if you have concerns, if they have missing baby teeth, or if you notice that they're a mouth breather, or if you notice that their face looks asymmetrical, you don't have to have a dentist tell you to go see an orthodontist. I mean, we'd be happy to do a complimentary consultation to take a look at your child's mouth and determine if there's any orthodontic concerns and needs for treatment. A lot of times we don't do treatment when the kids are seven or eight years age, but there can be some advantages to doing some early intervention. And so, uh, but if we can give you some peace of mind just by having a conversation and, and discussing the, the dental status of your child's mouth, we'd be happy to do that. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's awesome. Well, I just want to thank you for coming on today and talking to me and giving us your time. I know um, you're a very busy uh, man, especially with the fam, yeah. and we can do nothing but honor that for you. So thank you so much for um, coming on. Um, again, as always, if you have any questions or concerns about orthodontics or anything else that has to do with your child's oral health care, toothbrushes, toothpaste, whatever, we're here for you. Go ahead and drop a comment below, and you can always email me directly at amy at smilesarewild.com and we'll see you guys again soon. Thank you.